All right, so we are at San Alejo Campground, uh, which is in our hometown of San Diego, kind of North County. Why are we here, Tony Tao? Because it was our anniversary. It's our 36th anniversary, 36 years of wedded bliss. So we're gonna hang out at the campground, but one thing that we're gonna do uh, while we're here is shoot a quick video on how we do the setup on our Imagine 2500 RL. So that's it, uh, let's get this thing set up. All right, so first thing I do when doing the disconnect, uh, because I don't want to do this after I've already disconnected because it will, um, it will be a pain in the ass if I have to hook back up, and that is I am going to check to make sure that my power is good. That's the first thing that I do. So I'm gonna make sure everything is turned off first and then plug in. Pay no attention to the choking dog. So this is what I want to see a white dog face. Once I have a white dog face, we're good to go. So the white dog face on the Power Watch dog basically means that that surge protector has tested the power pedestal and knows that it's wired correctly, that the power's good, and that means I can plug in the rest of my trailer. So don't skip that step. Next thing we're gonna do, level. First, we're gonna check side to side, um, and then we're gonna check front to back. Let's go side to side. So normally just throw this on the bumper. I can tell that I need to bring the right side up just to touch. Come on in close. These are the Anderson Levelers. Absolutely brilliant invention. Get yourself some of them. Basically how they work, we're gonna set them behind the tires. As we roll up on the tires, it'll roll down and it'll bring that side of the trailer up. So we have to bring up the right side. Let's go to the right side. We're actually heading a little bit downhill. So I think I'm gonna use that downhill to help me out and I'm gonna pull forward on the levelers. one under each tire. Now, Tony is gonna go in the back of the trailer and let me know, and she's gonna keep her eye on that level, let me know when we're level. Maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Next thing we're gonna do is put these chocks in on the levelers. Don't be an idiot like I did the first time and put the chocks on the wrong side. Did that once and then when I pulled off the hitch, the tra whole trailer almost came off of the wood underneath the, the tongue jack. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna put these opposite to the opposite side of where the leveler is. So the levelers are in the front, so I'm gonna put these in the back. So those are the leveler chocks in, but we're extra safe. So we got extra chocks. We're gonna get the other chocks and put them on the other side. Let's go. So these are the other chocks, uh, Harbor Freight Specials, and we're just gonna jam them in on this side. One to the back, one to the front. Now we are going to unhook from the hitch so that we can level front to back. All right, so now we're gonna unhitch the truck, which is a couple of different things. We're gonna unplug the power. We're gonna pull the safety chains, pull the breakaway strap, um, and then we're going to actually leave the hitch coupled and raise it up enough to get the weight off of the sway bars. Time to get the sway bars off. Once I get this pin out, I always stick it back in there so that that way it doesn't get lost. There's one side. Let's go get the other. Again, put the pin back in so it doesn't get lost. That's your best work? Not my best work. All right, 
Okay, now if that sway bar is off, one thing that we do is take a towel and wrap it over the front of that sway bar just so it doesn't scratch the bottom of the, uh, the garage. All right, so the next thing we need to do is unlock the hitch and then raise the tongue off of the ball. This was gonna happen. All right, so it's a little tight, so we gotta back up the truck just a smidge. All right, drop the ball. I'm gonna pull the truck out, move it over. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to level front to back. The real question is, how level are we now? Not bad, really. Not bad. We always like to leave it a little heavy in one end just so the water drains off, so not bad. So normally at this part of the setup, we would use the tongue jack, either extended or retracted so that we could level the trailer front to back. We just got lucky and after we pulled it off the hitch, we're perfectly level front to back. So we only have one pack of these. We probably need two pack of these for just this reason. And that is right now, we're quite a ways off the ground in the front. I normally do two on each, but what I'm gonna do is do three on the front, two on the backs, because again, we're, we're in limited supply. We have the seriously good upper downer. We're, we're not rich and have the drill yet, so we gotta use the manual one. Is that what it's called, is the upper downer? The upper downer. All right, quick editing tip. Yes, there are four stabilizer jacks. No, we are not going to show you all four of them going down. The key about editing is to cut the boring parts of life out. Those are boring parts, we're cutting them out. All right, so next up is water. I'm gonna hook the water next. We have uh, a couple of bins in the garage where I keep water stuff in one bin and then I keep sewage stuff in another bin so that it keeps them separated. So let's do the water. So on the water side, we use one of these, you know, buy them at Walmart water filters. Uh, and I also use this because sometimes when it's when it's coming down off of the the spigot, uh, the hose will kink. If you put this on, it will keep the hose from kinking. The other thing is a pressure regulator uh, on this before, so when the water comes out of the spigot, it's being stepped down in pressure, so it doesn't destroy anything inside of your RV. So let's hook this on. Next is going to be the zero G hose. Love this zero G hose. Uh, the thing just absolutely will not kink. Um, so I'm gonna hook that up and plug it into the camera. Once the water's hooked up, you gotta make sure, or at least I make sure, that I'm set on city water and not tank fill. For some reason, this this switch confuses me. There's been multiple times where I've had it on tank fill and turned the water on, thinking it was on city water, and wind up putting like 10 gallons of water in my tank when I don't want to. I then just take the hose and roll it up underneath the trailer. Uh, and now I'm gonna actually plug in power so that Tony can get the slide out, uh, and then we'll work on the sewer hookups. Okay, so I don't know why this is, but every time I'm plugging in the power cable to the trailer, it's got like that, it's got the twist lock and then it's got the ring that screws in. I, for some reason, cannot get that ring to screw in without cross-threading every single time. If that's something that you're experiencing with a 2500RL, 
or any Imagine trailer, if you're experiencing that and have figured out a way to solve that problem, please tell me, put that in the comments below, uh, how you've solved it. All right, so now power's in. I'm gonna let Tony know that she can put out the slide. I'm gonna stay outside, keep an eye on it, and make sure it doesn't hit anything. Hold on, say that again, because that's a smart idea. I'm going to open the window on that side so I can hear you tell me whether that slide gets too close to the post over there. See, that's why I married a smart girl. She's gonna open the window. I'm gonna go around there. We're gonna put the slide out. Ready? Let's do this. I can hear you. Ready? Ready, take that slide out. I know, I gotta get the dog first. Come on. Did you make sure that there's nothing blocking the slide inside? There's nothing blocking it. You ready? Ready, go. Question. Am I the only one that has like an extreme level of anxiety every time we put the slide in or the slide out? I've read too many horror stories. I'm just waiting for something to go wrong. I like hold my breath until it's all the way out or it's all the way in. All right, slides out. Uh, I'm gonna go do the fun job of hooking up sewer. All right, very, very important when you're hooking up sewer, you have to have gloves. You don't want this stuff on your hands. Now, once they're on, we're gonna go get our other container that has all of our sewer stuff in it. All right, so this is all of our sewer hose, connectors, all that stuff in its own tub. The next thing I'm going to get is that like, I don't know what the heck you call this thing, that accordioning, Thing that allows you to put a slope on your sewer hose. I don't uh, the poop sloper. I don't. I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna get that. Some um, RV parks actually require you to have this, so carry one of them with you. They're a pain in the ass. They always fall apart. they they always you know come undone when you're trying to move them around. They're a pain, but sometimes you gotta have them. Okay. Pro tip: before you pull the cap off of your drain. Make sure that all of your drains are closed. For those of you in the back, pro tip, before you pull the cap on your drain, make sure that all of your drain valves are closed. So the one thing that I do recommend that you get for your sewer setup is a transparent 90 uh, where it goes into the sewer clean out. That's just so you can see what's coming out not that that's any fun, but then when you go to flush your black tanks, you can see when it's actually running clear and it's flush. So yeah, get one of those clear 90s, huge up. All right, so I dig this RV park because the uh, the clean out, the, the sewer clean out is really, really close. So we only had to use one hose. It's like maybe a 10 foot hose, we're plugged in. At this point, we're all set up. We just got to put the tubs and stuff back together um, and then go grab chairs and grab a beer on the beach. Uno cerveza para tu, señora. Thank you. De nada.